Good morning, Freedom Church. It's a privilege to be here this morning. Uh, yeah, the weather hasn't been so good. One of my mates came up from Cape Town, my brother-in-law, and I think he brought the bad weather with him, so we can blame him. But yeah, we're excited to be here this morning. We've been blessed to carry on with 3CI and their messages. So Eugene's blessed us with an awesome message this morning. We're excited to hear what he has to say and what he has to share. Hope you guys have your cappuccinos ready, your couch is nice and warm. And yeah, I pray that God's going to touch us and uh, He's really going to speak to us this morning.
Good morning, Freedom Church. It is absolutely outstanding to be with you again this morning. If we didn't have the privilege of meeting yet, I'm Eugene Smith, and I'm married to the love of my life, Wendy, this year for 21 years. We have got two children. My boy, Jaden, is in grade 11, and my daughter, Jessie, is a first-year varsity student at Tux. We are, as family, we're privileged to be on team at uh, Capital City Church, or 3CI, in Pretoria. And Fox and uh, Michelle and uh, Bryce and Cassidy are dear, dear friends of ours. And Fox family, we just want to honor you today. And we want to thank you, not only for saying yes to Jesus and starting Freedom Church, but Foxy, you continue to love your wife dearly. You look after your kids and you care deeply about each member that calls Freedom Church home. Buddy, we are so, so proud of you. Freedom Church, we love you. We pray for you. We pray God's kindness over you, God's protection over you, God's provision over you, and God's healing over you at this time. Friends, for a few minutes... I want to let you into one of the most vulnerable and difficult moments of my life. And I trust as I share this morning that God will put courage in our hearts again. We need to hold on to Jesus like never before, friends. And I trust that, uh, that our time together will just do just that. I want to take you back a couple of years, right back to the year of 1989. I was three, three months into my, my military training at uh, Tempe Military School in Bloemfontein, when one afternoon, my company commander called for me. And they rushed me back to the army base, and I'll never forget, as I walked into his office, I saw a local pastor sitting there with his eyes very emotional. It was one of my friends, my dad's best friends. And I sat down, and I won't forget his words said, Eugene, I'm so sorry, and I have to bring you this news. But your dad has been diagnosed with a very aggressive leukemia, and the doctors doesn't know how long he's going to be with us. Friends, it was like my whole world cave in. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. My dad, a rugby player, Strong man, at one stage over 110 kilograms, still young, just turned 40 years of age, just turned 40. And here I'm hearing he's got cancer and they don't know how much time he's got left. Well, that afternoon we made arrangements and we, I flew back to Johannesburg to be with him. And that was a story or ongoing situation for about three months, I flew between Bloemfontein and Johannesburg visiting my dad. 
And then on the 23rd of June, that same year, 1989, my dad, my hero, Rossi Smith, lost his battle against cancer. Now, friends, it was like my whole theology was challenged. Everything I believed in suddenly shattered and shook. My mom, not, not even 40 at the time, lost the lover of her youth. My brother of, seven, of, of 13, he lost his rugby hero, his greatest fan. And he'll miss the voice of my father next to the rugby field forever. My sister, only eight or nine at the time, lost her protector, the strongest man she's known. And I've lost my friend. I was only 17 years old. I lost the man that prayed with me when I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. I lost my dad who baptized me. I lost the man who prayed for hundreds of people and they got healed. I lost the man who at that time taught me everything about the word and everything about Jesus. And I didn't know what to make of this. I had more questions than answers. And Freedom Church, maybe this morning, in the current situation that you're in, maybe you are ill. Maybe you've got COVID and you don't know what tomorrow holds. Maybe you've lost a friend due to this illness or something else. Maybe in the midst of what our country is going through, you're busy losing a business and you're struggling to keep everything together and you don't know where the next meal is going to come from. And, and, and maybe you're struggling in your marriage to keep this all together and you, and you just cry out and you say, Lord, I don't know. It, it feels like I'm losing everything. Everything is on, on sandy ground. It's not on solid ground anymore. If that is you, Please stay with me for the next couple of moments, friends. And I trust that Jesus is going to to put courage in our hearts this morning. You know, there was a time when the disciples felt exactly the same way. In John 13, Jesus starts by telling his disciples that he was going to go away. He wasn't going to stay with them any longer and he would leave this world. And for a moment, it felt like their whole world shattered into pieces. They left their livelihood to follow Jesus. The one that protected them, the one that fed them, the one that taught them everything they knew is what's going to leave them and they don't know what to make of it. And if that wasn't enough, he tells them that one of them will betray him. And if that wasn't enough, he says, one of you you are going to deny me. He said to Peter, he's going to deny him. And, and Peter, in complete shock, he doesn't know what to make of all these things. And he said, Lord, where are you going? So why can't I go with you? Start asking questions like, like we all do in situations like this. And then, then Peter makes a statement in, in, in saying, Lord, I'll lay my life down for you. Not knowing that the very one that he's speaking to is about to lay his life down for Peter. And friends, I wish I was a fly against the wall in that room. Because I could think that the room might have gone quiet. Maybe a little bit of whispering here and a little bit of whispering there. As each one of the disciples wrestled through what they've just heard. Wrestled with questions, wrestled with emotions. Not knowing what to make of it. But Jesus knew exactly what they were thinking. Jesus knew exactly how they felt. Jesus knew exactly their emotions. And Jesus comes through and he steps in with one of the most profound scriptures ever written. Friends, if you have more questions this morning than answers, if you don't know which way to turn to like I do, I've got a lot of questions at this time then Jesus comes in this morning with the exact same scripture as he gave to the disciples so many years ago. We're going to read together out of John 14. Verse 1 says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. 
If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. See, so what Jesus is doing, he says, I know that you are here in a place. Yes, and it is temporary. But there is a place that I'm going to prepare for you. So he recognizes in this place their hearts are troubled. And he says, if you believe, you believe in God, but believe also in me. And if you believe in me, believe that I'm going to prepare a place for you. So yeah, your place is currently shakable and movable and insecure. But I'm going to prepare a place for you, which is secure, which is unchanging, which is immovable, which is steadfast, which is, which, which is secure, and, and it's, it's, it's for you. He says, in my father's house, there's many rooms. So Jesus takes them out of their situation. He says, guys, for a moment, the reason why I'm going is for your advantage, because it's for your benefit, because this place that you're currently in, will not sustain you. But I want you to know, you've got to hang on to what I'm going to prepare for you. Friends, our end is secure. If you ask me, Eugene, do you still miss your dad? This year has been 32 years, friends. And then my answer to you would be yes, at least once a week. But do I know that Jesus was on the throne when my dad passed away? And do I know that Jesus had my dad's end secure? Absolutely. Do I know that when, when my time and my end on this earth, this earth will come, whether my future and my ending will be secure? Through Jesus Christ and His grace, absolutely, friends. We have a security to hang on to that Jesus went and prepared a place for us. So you might say this morning, Eugene, but how do we get there? How do we get to this place that's secure? It's okay to know it's secure, but, but what's the way? How do, we, how do we go about it? You know what, friends? In verse 5, Thomas asks exactly the same question. It's almost like he's, if he was living today, he would ask for GPS coordinates to get there. Thomas says this in verse 5, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that'll be enough for us. You know what, friends? Jesus said there's a place but when we ask him how to get to the place, then he says, no, no, no. Let's dig a little bit deeper. There is a place, but there's a person. There's my father. And I am the way to the father. And my father longs to be in relationship with you. So, so, so Jesus takes us directly to the father. So we don't have to wait to the end to be part of the end. We can be part of what Jesus has for us now because Jesus takes us to the Father. So the Father is secure. The Father longs for us. And Jesus is the way to the Father. And suddenly he says, I'll take you to the Father and then you'll end up in the secure place. You know, when, when Wendy and I, when we were courting and we decided we, we want to be together for the rest of our lives, we we got married, and then we moved into a place. So I didn't go and get a place and, and then said, okay, now I need, I need a wife to fit into this place. No. I went, we went and got married. We moved into a place, and the place just facilitates for us to be together. God the Father wants to be in in, an intimate relationship with us, Jesus makes the way. When we're in this intimate relationship for eternity, we'll stay in a place with Him. So the end is secure, the Father is secure, and the way is secure. It is unshakable, friends. 
you say, Eugene, okay, the way is secure, but I mean, we, we're in real life. So, so I got to make business decisions every day. I got to make decisions for my family every day. I got to deal with all these things that we're dealing with every day. How, how, do, we, how do we deal with this? So I know about the Father, I know about that Jesus is the way, but how, how do I make decisions? And friends, Jesus is faithful. He said, I'll never, never leave you and I'll never forsake you. But in verse 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commands. Verse 16, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. For time's sake, let's jump to verse 25. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus started in verse 1 by saying, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And then he took us, he told us about a place. Now Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be, be afraid because he gives us a helper to help us in the place where we're at at the moment. Friends, the, you might ask, How does the Holy Spirit help us? Well, the Holy Spirit speaks to us each individually and meets us right where we're at. There are many ways that the Holy Spirit speaks to us, but I'm just going to highlight four areas how the Holy Spirit speaks to us. First of all, the Holy Spirit speaks to us through His still small voice. I remember my friend in Durban, years ago, he was in a nightclub and somebody came up to him and offered him drugs. And at that moment, as he stepped forward, he heard a little voice inside of him that says, Ryan, if you take this today, it'll destroy your life. And I remember him stepping, saying he stepped back and he declined. And that's, that day his life started changing. Today, friends, he leads a church. He's got a beautiful wife and a beautiful family. And he's serving Jesus because he obeyed the still small voice spoken to his heart. When you hear that still small voice within you, don't ignore it. it might just be the Holy Spirit wanting to protect you. Secondly, friends, the Holy Spirit convicts us. I remember a couple of years ago, a colleague of mine that worked with us, he stole some money from our office. And as we were working through the video footage and all the material and gathering information and writing reports to find out who it was, one morning he walked into my office and said, Eugene, I've been convicted last night. I wanted to pray and I couldn't pray. And the next morning he walked into my office and he, he brought the money back that he's taken. And he said, here, is, here it is that I've stolen and, and I ask your forgiveness. And, and friends, yes, there were consequences to his actions. But the end result is we helped him to get out of debt. He started a business. And he tucked into a local church. You see, when we are convicted through the Holy Spirit and we repent and we go and make right, then he sets us free. And he sets our, our, our world or our, our life on a course that will serve him. So his still, voice, his still small voice speaks to us. His spirit convicts us. Another example is he remembers us of scripture and he remembers us of Jesus. 
So before Wendy and I got married, we thought, you know, we, we're not good enough to make marriage work alone. And we asked, we said, Lord, please give us a scripture that we can hang on to in marriage. Something that will keep us strong. Something that will keep us solid. And something that will keep divorce away from our vocabulary. And we read one afternoon, we read Ecclesiastes 4 verse 12 that says, A cord of three strands is not easily broken. And friends, whenever we face a wobbly, within me I'm reminded of that scripture. A three-stranded cord will not easily be broken. And then we might pray through it. We might sit down and discuss it. And if we can't get a solution, we might go and see a couple that we trust that can give us sound advice. But a three-stranded cord is not easily broken and there's no way we have to sort that out. And the Holy Spirit reminds us of that scripture. Sometimes the Holy Spirit gives us peace, friends, in situations. And when, when we wanted to buy a house, the, um, I didn't have peace. I had kind of peace in my heart, but then I didn't have peace in my heart. And then I spoke to my wife, and she didn't have peace in her heart. And we thought, but Lord, you've given us this home. Why don't we have peace? So at the end, it worked out that we did have peace, and we did buy the home. But in this waiting period, things became evident of this property that we didn't know. The plans were not in place. There were certain structural issues that we had to consider whether we can afford to, to rectify it. And after we've considered everything and all these things came to light, we were able to take action, sort some of the things out, and we had peace. So if we had bought that property when we didn't have peace, we would have had huge challenges. But just that time of waiting gave us peace and God's blessing is on it. Friends, so practical ways, just four practical ways we can hear the Holy Spirit guiding us every day. In your situation, you might speak in a small, still small voice. You might convict us of wrongdoing. He reminds us of scripture and he'll give us peace. There are many, many, many more ways. One thing I am certain of, he meets each one of us individually where we're at. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. The Holy Spirit is secure. He will help you. He will carry you. So friends, we know that the place is secure. Our Father God is secure. The way is secure. The Holy Spirit that helps us here is absolutely secure. Jesus started this passage in John 14 with, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This morning, if you believe in God and you also believe in Jesus, and you know the Holy Spirit and you've experienced His presence and you experience His guidance, I want to encourage you this morning. Won't you tuck into him deeper than ever before? Won't you pray? Won't you be more sensitive to him? And he'll guide us and he'll help us through this situation. He'll remind us of Jesus and he'll remind us that what we're facing might be insecure, but it's temporary. What he established is permanent and everlasting. But if you say to me, Eugene, this morning, you say to me this morning, Eugene, won't you help me to believe? I don't believe yet in my life's falling apart. And it's my absolute privilege to pray with you this morning and ask you to pray, believe in your heart, as we're going to pray together a little bit later on. But I've got good news for you. Jesus may use this moment to put your, road, your life on a new road, on a new track, give you hope that you can believe there is a place secure for you. There is a way that's secure and unwavering and he can change your life like he changed mine years ago. Friends, only if we believe, then and only then can we believe that the end is secure 
the way is secure, and our helper is secure. Let's pray together. Father God, you say in Romans 10 verse 9, if I declare with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that Father that you raised Jesus from the dead, then I will be saved. And this morning I, will de- I want to declare with my mouth that Jesus, you are Lord and Savior of my life. I believe Jesus that you died for me I believe that you wash my sins away, that you cleanse me. I believe, God, that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I believe that through your finished work, Jesus, and your grace that I am healed, that I am saved, that I am set free. Holy Spirit, won't you, be, won't you take, take roots in my life? Won't you take root in my life? Won't you come and make my heart your home? Won't you guide me? Won't you lead me? Won't you teach me more about Jesus and take me to the Father? In Jesus' name. And Lord, I want to pray for Freedom Church this morning. I want to pray your kindness over Freedom Church, your goodness over Freedom Church, your protection and your provision over Freedom Church in Jesus' name. Amen.